Tone Sub Rocks presents The No Limits Music Show Filmed at Duff's in Brooklyn With your hosts Roger Clark, Angelina del Carmen And George Shilton On today's episode we got the new video by Agnostic Front An exclusive indie winner got from Behemoth Plus a video by Kilco A conversation with Max and Igor Cavalera about the roots of their music And a live performance by Firehate Buckle up the No Limits Music Show starts now! Every single day in heavy music, there's a lot of news. Sometimes, there's some tasty drama. Recently, obviously, involving Black Sabbath, Ozzy Osbourne versus former drummer Bill Ward, one of the co-founding members as well, who hasn't been with the band, you know, already for a while because they say he's too ill to play drums every night. And they both decided to go on social media and let everybody know, hey, here's our dirty laundry. It's Zap. the new street fight. That, that's how it is. It, that's what you do. You don't, you know, you don't meet, you know, in, in an alley. You, you go online and you just say, ah, hey, he's a jerk. Ah, no, you're a jerk. And you go back and forth and, you know, it's crazy, right? Yeah. It is. And I, I'm surprised that they couldn't work around the schedule or make it easier for him because of what they did for Tony Iommi. They were able to work around him having chemotherapy treatments and they would stop the tour long enough for him to rest. So why not the drummer? There's something behind the scenes that we probably will never find out, maybe when a book comes out or something like that, eventually. But I'm sure there's something happening behind the scenes. All we want, the fans of music, the fans of Black Sabbath, the pioneers of heavy metal, is one last show. That, I mean, not, like, they're not to do a whole tour, but can they please get together and do that one final farewell show the right way, you know? Yeah, and that, I was, you know, that's like how I, my whole thing with Van Halen. I never got to see them in the old days with David Lee Roth. So I'm with Sammy Hagar, more of a David Lee Roth guy. Then. I saw him with Gary Sharon from Extreme, right? Which was like, that still didn't feel quite right. It didn't make any sense. And then um, David Lee Roth like, comes back. I'm like, oh, this is great. And then Michael Anthony's gone. <laughs> so it's like, I can't, can't get a break with that one. You know? yeah, I saw when they announced that on MTV and it was incredibly awkward. And I think kind of got the feeling that it wasn't really going to happen. <laughs> yeah, I mean, That's how it used to be, right? People would go on national television and air out their dirty laundry. Now you get Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. You get the keyboard warriors. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lazy way of having a battle. Speaking of Van Halen, they recently did their first national TV appearance with David Lee Roth on vocals. A lot of people thought it was terrible from the singing standpoint, but people are saying that he's never been a great singer. David Lee Roth to me was always like a lounge singer almost in a lot of ways, right? <laughs> that's I mean, true. I mean, and that's and that, I think that's what pissed Eddie Van Halen off so much is when he went and did like California Girls and Just a Gigolo, and he's like, that's what is true. this? That's what is this? I don't want you in my band. That ain't rock and roll. It's horrible. And you know, it's like, so yeah, but I, but nevertheless, he's David Lee Roth. I don't know what they did on those first, you know, the first early albums. He, to make him sound good, he sounded better, obviously. He must have had a halfway decent voice, right? And great energy. And great, great energy. energy, yeah. Yeah, and he can't, he, he engages the crowd. I mean, like, I went to see him on that last tour, and it was like with Wolfgang on bass, and it was cool. It was, I, I Did was, he sing? What? Yeah. Was it a little crunchy sound? Yeah, you know, Eddie Van Halen was pissed. He kicked his monitor really? off the stage because it wasn't working. It was, it was, you know, a typically grouchy Eddie Van Halen. But at the end, we were like, oh, that was awesome. They played every song we liked. And I was like, it's great. You know, I was like, yeah. Well, I'm curious because I know a lot of Broadway singers sing until literally the day they die. And yet it seems like a lot of rock singers' voices don't last as long as that. The drugs and the smoking cigarettes. Added to the stress of touring, traveling all the time. Yeah, you gotta take care of yourself. And you know, and you just brought up a great point. Sometimes you hear out there from record labels that hey, that band is too old, even though they sound amazing. Let's look at BB King. He's been playing shows pretty much his entire entire life. He's never disappointed. A single fan always sounds amazing. I was thinking I saw him like maybe 20 years ago upstate, and uh, I thought, oh god, I better catch him before he's gone. And it's like 20 years later, and God, god bless the guy. You know, it's great. I mean. I think um, if you, even if you like the heavy stuff, it's always good to see the the greats, right. like your Claptons and and, and you know and BB King and guys like that, and really kind of see like where it all kind of got started. And that's one a good example. I think. And you know, even then they have their own influences that came before them, and it's like it's just like seeing that domino effect of where music came from. Back to the record labels, you and Shoretta, you're a hardworking band, professional band, have videos out. And you don't have that label support, you know? It's great to have that machine behind you because they help you. But wouldn't you say that now is a good time to be an independent artist? I would say so. You know, we have talked to labels and had offers and 
It's really hard to give up your rights and the control when you've been doing it yourself for so long. Like even like Facebook or Twitter passwords, we're like, no, we, we like the way things are. We don't oh. want to lose that control. Someone who worked for pretty good was Joan Jett. When right. she was trying to get signed after the runaways, nobody wanted no, nobody wanted to sign her, which was ridiculous in my head because I love Joe Jett. She starts her own label, and the rest is history. She just got inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So it's like, uh, and, and, and inspired so many bands over the years, you know, so it's great, you know. We got a chance to talk recently to the great Agnostic Front. They're on a world tour right now. We just got a chance to see them at Bowery Electric. Great shows there for their record release parties. The new release is called The American Dream Died. This is the title track, The Great Agnostic Front. Social system, degradation, multinational corporations, another false flag, operation, military, world domination. Secret government, hypocrisy, it's the world order, it's not for me. Unfortunately, part of life is death, you know, without death there is no life. And right now, Tony Iommi has cancer, Bruce Dickinson has cancer. It's like, hey man, can like rock and roll legends not get cancer, man? You know, every people we know in our everyday lives have it, and it's going to happen to some of the people that we look up to and respect in the music world too, which is, it's like kind of the draw, you know? It's like, you know. But they're uh, they're all in remission right now, right? They're all doing better, so yes. It, yes. I think that fighting cancer is getting better. Absolutely. Incredible. And speaking of a musician who destroyed, killed cancer, is Nergal from Behemoth. He had leukemia, and the story is amazing. A fan saved his life. He had a bone marrow transplant. Nobody around his camp was compatible, and a fan, you know, they saw a message somewhere on you know on social media, and they're like, you know what? Let me see if he tested and he saved Nergal's life. Unbelievable. Pretty That's amazing. where social media can work pretty good, That's right? That's true. We were complaining about it before, but... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, right? Yeah. It's a good way to uh, reach out and ask for random things, and you never know what you get back. The first time I saw him after that, I thought, okay, maybe some things have changed because after you go through the whole treatment, your body's very weak. But then, man, if you guys had the chance to see Nergal and Behemoth coming up, Amazing, like a monster on stage. Like he didn't lose anything. Thankfully, you know what I mean. That's 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 so cool that that happened to him. You know. And we've all seen people in our everyday lives who who have gone through this, and and to and I. You always want. I mean, we were talking before and saying like, you can catch you catch a cold, and sometimes you're a crybaby about it. But to have to go through chemotherapy and have to have that experience, and then be able to bounce back and get back into your life again. Is, it's unbelievable. You have to have so much, it's inspiring, and uh, you have to have so much respect for anyone who could do that. We have an audio clip that we're gonna roll right now, in which Nergal talks about the whole treatment, and most importantly, he updates the fans on the future of the band. There's a lot of rumors going around that they might take a break, because, you know, these guys need breaks here and there, but right now, he tells us exactly what's gonna be happening with Behemoth moving forward. <laughs> Around, you know, me being sick. I mean, I was sick and that's it, you know. And I, 
talking about it. And I know for, for a fact that actually talking about it publicly and help out many people to, to deal with that, you know, the problem, you know, that they have within their, their own families or the, the, you know, people that might be sick themselves. So I just know it for a fact, you know what I mean? So it's, it's good. It's, I don't know, it was some kind of also therapy for me. I don't know, I'm not sure, maybe. I don't really see it that way. And the record, um, and the record wasn't really... I'm still for, for like, you know, for me dealing with, you know, this uh, post-sickness times. I don't know. I just... Mm, mm, no, I, I, I didn't really think about it that way. But, but I mean, there's stuff, you know, that's just happening, you know, subconsciously. And uh, the fact that I'm telling you now that I don't think that something happened, you know, that it doesn't mean that, he, that you know, I, I might not know all the reasons why I do things, you know what I mean? I just, I just think that the, the potential of this record is, is like, vast. And uh, I need to make sure that we're gonna uh, make, you know, make use of it like, to the fullest. We're just gonna squeeze the, you know, the, the fruit and, and, and just, uh, and just, you know, make all the use there is, you know, make, uh, just use all the potential. And uh, you cannot just do it like within like a one and a half year cycle of touring and they just, and maybe like throwing one or maybe two videos. No, I mean, I had the impression that this record needs way more of attention and energy than any other record because we're just so aware of how important it is and how groundbreaking it is for us, for the band. So uh, I just, you know, decided to just like fully focus on the record, on touring the record, on playing with the form, playing with the record and just, just you know, getting, getting us inspired as we can with just, you know, fucking around with different ideas, you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, and, and, and when, once we are done with that, which is, I don't know when, but yeah, one day we were like, okay, this is it, you know, we, we're done. We are, we, we did everything we, you know, possibly could um, to express ourselves like holy. Um, this album cycle, then we're gonna take a break. Then see what happens, you know. That's, we're just not look, we're looking, you know, much farther than this, you know. So there's there's a couple of tools that we are um, that we have planned out, and uh, we'll be busy throughout the end of the year. And there's some stuff coming up for 2016, and there's like a, some new videos coming, and then uh, they're on the works now. So there's a lot of stuff happening, a lot of stuff. Next up, we have a music video that's very close to my heart because I'm actually in it. I'm actually playing a lesbian, which I seem to get cast as a lot, even though I'm mostly straight in real life. So check out Kill Code's music video, The Wrong Side. you lost thoughts of what it was turn it all in doesn't mean much if it hurts woke up in a different space took the time to figure retrace the things we said and did then so proud to learn and begin not walking away in this and to you I wish you this go away Make me happy, no one needs to know When both sides line up on the wrong side Go away, make me happy, no one needs to know When both sides line up on the wrong side I 
ago they were Sepultura. They broke up in the mid-90s and the brothers in the band didn't speak for 10 years, although one of them went on to start or be in Soulfly. Mm -hmm. And um, then yeah, and recently... A, and actually, yeah, just a, a little bit of tragedy brought the brothers and the family back together. Max's stepson died, had a memorial concert out in Phoenix, and Igor came up on stage to play with Soulfly, and then they, they realized that, hey, this is how it's supposed to be. Let's keep our family together, and of course, keep playing music. And now, four al almost four albums later, they're ready, they're still rocking out. Yeah. And Soulfly is also on like their tenth album now, so the music continues. Yeah. Pretty amazing. So check it out right now, Joe's interview with Cavalier Conspiracy. We're at Webster Hall in New York City, where Cavalier Conspiracy has returned with a brand new album, man. An album. When you told me that you're gonna push the envelope to the next limit, I was like, okay, you know, because you know you've always kind of done that with your music, but this album is just from front to back, heavy, strong, and you know yeah, what? Yeah, it was a, the right album to make. You know, we wanna, we did our two records, <laughs> inflicted blunt force trauma that were kind of more trash and. Uh, you know, I was talking to Igor, like, be kind of cool to do, go even heavier, man. And let's go harder on this one, you know. And he was excited for it. And we started writing the songs. And song by song, they end up just being faster. Um, and just kept rolling like that, man, you know. And I did real deep vocals. The vocals are real deep in the album. And he plays fast on the whole record, so it's fucking great. I love the record myself, you know. I think it's uh, really good. And... And it sounds real dirty. When you guys started out, it was going to soccer stadiums, playing music, uh, you know, because there's always percussion in the Brazilian football games. 
Or let's, let's talk about a little bit about the, you know, how that happened, how the whole evolution of you guys playing music, of course, always organically came together. Well, I started out playing drums like way before I even thought about being in a band. I just wanted to be a drummer. I wanted to have a drum set in my room and play, you know, for fun. And then, of course, like me and Max, we were very uh, fanatic about football. We used to go to the games all the time with our dad. And then on those games, sometimes they have some percussion for you to play. And I used to play on those. And it was amazing. And that's a big, still a big inspiration for me, those rhythms, you know, like the mixture of Brazilian, African beats. I try to bring that into whatever I do, you know, with uh, Mix Hell or with Cavalera. So those things are really cool. And, and it is, again something that is natural. It's not something that I need to go and do a crazy research on the library to find those sounds and things. No, it's it's part of our growing up, you know. Part of your culture. Yes. That. Uh, Corinthians games or which games were you guys wanted Palmeiras, to see? Palmeiras, Palmeiras, yeah, yeah. We're, we're the enemies of Corinthians. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we used to go to, uh, when we lived in Belo Horizonte, uh, during Carnival, we go practice at Paulo's house and we had to walk like 10 blocks to, to get to Paulo's house. And during Carnival week, they have the, uh, the the samba school practicing, you know? And it was like 30 drummers playing together, man. It's really cool. Very powerful. And, uh, very powerful. So on the way to practice, we'll stop, you know, and just hang out for like half an hour and check out the drummers, man. And it was powerful, you know? And it was really cool, man. It was the only thing I like. Uh, after afterwards, they put me vocals and they ruin it. They ruin the samba with vocals. <laughs> Version is much better. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, it's just the drums, the power of the drums. You know, that's what Igor talk about. But that's where it all started. You know, so we always it's always been with us. It's like like he said, there's nothing that you have to look in a dictionary or find in a book. It's in in within us. You know, in our culture, which is really cool and unique. And I think that we kind of brought the attention to that when we did the Roots record. It was, I think, the most attention that we brought to the percussion side of things, you know, and Chaos AD too. I think Chaos AD started with Igor doing some rhythms and was really cool. Andy Wallace picked up on it right away, of course, you know, he's a master and he's like, mm, this is cool, you know. Mm -hmm. we, uh, so on, on the song Refuse and Resist, there's like a really killer trademark thing that Igor does on the drum. Refuse. Reason. So I think it's always been there, man. It's, it's, it's great. It's part of our heritage and our culture. And we bring, from time to time, we bring it into the sound. But Cavalera is more metal, man. You know, I think that what I think is cool about Cavalera is the, the period that I think that me and Igor based the idea of the project, which is, I think, is a little bit the beneath the remains arise sepultura era, which is the most ferocious sepultura era, you know. And but like Igor said, go into the future, you know, because it's not a copy of the original; it's our own thing, you know. And uh, and I think it's very exciting to do that right now. And now we got three records and got a lot of songs to play. And it's fun to see the songs becoming classics, man. You know, like we we play now Sanctuary and Inflicted, Killing Inside, and see the whole crowd singing. And uh, that's a trip, man, watching the song become a classic right in front of your eyes like that. It's really, really a good feeling. Having the kids sing, sing your words, you know, that's yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it's cool because, it's, you know, um, they want to hear the Sepultura stuff, but you, you play a song like Sanctuary right together with the Sepultura song and you get the same reaction, uh, which for me it shows that they love um, the Cavalera project as much as they love the Sepultura stuff. So they, they are loving it, you know, and so we're going to keep doing it because of that, because we know they are feeling it. And, and that when, when the music is done like that, with the heart and the soul that you pour in and the people are feeling it, there's no stopping, man, you know. And w what I love about Cavalera is actually the freedom that me and Igor have. We can do what we want, how we want it, when we want it, yeah, which is, it's, is great, you know. Because yeah. it, it, like, you know, we said before, we, we're really proud of our past, but 
we're really looking forward. Right now, like we're doing this tour, me and Max, we're already talking so much about our next Cavalier record. And for me, that's exciting. You know, it's like we already, instead of just going like, oh yeah, we're doing this and just playing old songs. No, no, we're already thinking like, man, should, we should do this and, and, and that. And as a musician, that's the, the coolest thing you can do is keep moving and keep learning, you know. So I'm really excited about our future also. Would you say that the time off you have from each other helped to be able to kind of grow that back or give know. rebirth to that? I don't know if probably you learn, you know, for, from things like that, but I don't know if, if it helped or, or not. That, that I think that I know more than anything is that it is the coolest thing to be right now doing this. You know, independently of what happened in the past, right now it's, it's the coolest thing, you know, like going on tour, talking about making new music and, you know, having our family. That's, that's what it's cool. What are some of the things you guys like doing as brothers nowadays? I mean, we hang out, you know, we watch Some movies. Black. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, yeah. We, do, we perform Black Magic. <laughs> the other thing is for real. No, man. I mean, we do, we do, uh, we hang out a lot, man. Watch um, some, some shows on on the bus together and talk about music max thank you very much for you know 30 years already igor as well right. 30 years of doing music the right way 30 you know more we'll be yes, in the wheelchairs exactly. we we'll do another interview in in 30 more years hey god willing yeah, man god yeah, well, willing we'll, we'll be rocking in the wheelchairs and shit it's still breaking <laughs> shit still fucking shit up but it's all good it's all in the name of metal we are Duff's Wheel of Misfortune. We're going to spin this wheel and we're going to use the numbers to ask the patrons of this bar random questions. So let's give it a go. Yeah. All right, number 23, favorite independent band. So let's start asking fans. So we're talking about our favorite independent bands here at Duff's. Tell me a little, some of your. Um, well, my boys in Spectral Voices are definitely really awesome. Uh, everyone should check them out. What is your favorite independent band? I Kill Ya. Um, to be honest, I like way too many, so I really can't give you just one. Yeah, so get multiple bands is great. We love multiple. I Kill Ya? Who is your favorite independent band? Well, I would say Discordia. Awesome, and why? Uh, because it's just in the, in the black metal lesson, and it's a Latin metal band, black metal band, so I support them all then. We're going with Driven Mad on this one. And why is that? They got an old school kind of metal feel to them. They're really, really awesome. <laughs> right now we have a badass live music video by Fired Haze, the Cuban metal band from New Jersey, filmed at Webster Hall when they play with De La Tierra. This is Fire Haze with Silence.
here at Duff's in Brooklyn, the heavy metal mecca. We want to thank you so much for watching. The fact that you watch makes us very happy. Yes, please watch. Share it on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that good stuff. It's the No Limits Music Show. This is your show. So let us know, you know, what can we do better, who you want to see on the show, and we'll do it. We'll make it happen. Send all angry cards and letters to us. We can handle it. Yeah, yeah, we can take it. We'll probably read them on, on, on the show, right? We'll read them. Why not? Yeah. Actually, that's a great idea. <laughs> hey, all the ideas are rolling out already. Woo. Coming up, we have Agnostic Front, Cold Chamber, Corey Taylor from Slipknot and Stone Sour, Randy Bly from Lamo God, and so many artists that are going to blow your mind. This is the No Limits Music Show. We want to thank you for watching. We want to thank Jimmy Dove, the entire staff here at Dove's Brooklyn. We love you guys because you guys care about music. And, of course, we can't forget our brothers from Kill Code, from Fire Haze, from the Gnostic Front. You guys are fucking amazing, and we thank you for your support, people. You are awesome watching this. Till next time. Right after the taping of this episode, Mr. B.B. King, the King of Blues, passed away at the age of 89 in Las Vegas, Nevada, where he was sleeping. We want to dedicate this entire episode to Mr. King and want to thank him for the 70-plus years of making this world a better-sounding place. Rest in peace, Mr. King.